Good afternoon. Welcome to Sacred Hearts Parish. We welcome those present here at church and also those attending Mass via live stream at home. My name is Sean Brenner. Bill Brenner and I will be your lectors today. We gather today as a community of believers to celebrate God's great gifts to us, God's Word and the Eucharist. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Lent. Our presider is Father Dan. Our Mass intention is for Fanny Shea. And our second collection is for humanitarian relief for Ukraine. As our Lenten journey continues, we hear the story about a fig tree that does not bear fruit. What is the point of a tree that bears no fruit? It should be cut down. What fruit does our own faith bear in our lives? Are we a fruitful, a fruitful vine blossoming with the benefits of a deep faith? Or are we barren, not letting on to any onlooker that we believe in the Lord at all? This is a fitting weekend for us to have the icon of St. Joseph on the altar. As a carpenter, Joseph was well acquainted with working with wood, chopping and cutting with great skill. He is a faithful model of living a life that bears fruit, serving as Jesus' earthly father and, and as the most chaste spouse of Mary. St. Joseph, pray for us. Let us now stand and give praise and glory to our God. Please join in singing our opening hymn number 525, Christ in me arise. Christ in me arise and dispel all the darkness. Christ in me arise with your power and your strength. Christ in me pour out your blessing and healing. Christ in me arise and I shall rise with you. Be now my day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Coming together this afternoon, let us prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries of our faith. God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. 
A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. Leading the flock across the desert, he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There an angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in fire flaming out of a bush. As he looked on, he was surprised to see that the bush, though on fire, was not consumed. So Moses decided, I must go over to look at this remarkable sight and see why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw him coming over to look at it more closely, God called out to him from the bush, Moses, Moses. He answered, Here I am. God said, Come no nearer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. I am the God of your fathers, he continued, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. But the Lord said, I have witnessed the affliction of my people in Egypt, and have heard their cry of complaint against their slave drivers, so I know well what they are suffering. Therefore, I have come down to rescue them from the hands of the Egyptians, and lead them out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Moses said to God, But when I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, if they ask me, What is his name? What am I to tell them? God replied, I am who am. Then he added, This is what you shall tell the Israelites. I am sent me to you. God spoke further to Moses. Thus shall you say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever. Thus am I to be remembered through all generations. The word of the Lord. For as the heavens are high above the earth, 
so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all of them were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food, all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was the Christ. Yet God was not pleased with most of them, for they were stuck down in the desert. These things happened as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil things as they did. Do not grumble as some of them did, and suffer death by the destroyer. These things happen to them as an example, and they have been written down as a warning to us, upon whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, whoever thinks he is standing secure should take care not to fall. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. With A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Some people told Jesus about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with the blood of their sacrifices. Jesus said to them in reply, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were greater sinners than all other Galileans? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. Of the, all those 18 people who were killed when the tower at Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than everyone else who lived in Jerusalem? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. And he told them this parable. There once was a person who had a fig tree planted in his orchard, and when he came in search of fruit on it, he found none. He said to the gardener, For three years now I have come in search of fruit on this fig tree, but have found none. So cut it down. Why should it exhaust the soil? He said to him in reply, Sir, leave it for this year also, and I shall cultivate the ground around it and fertilize it it may bear fruit in the future. If not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not gonna say who, but a certain priest that lives in the rectory likes to buy odd things every now and then, and we had some figs sitting on the counter for better than maybe six weeks. No one had broken them open, so I threw them in the trash. But it's not me. I buy things that everybody likes, like dove bars. Who doesn't like a dove bar? Alfred Nobel the man who instituted and endowed the Nobel Peace Prize was a Swedish chemist who made his fortune by inventing powerful explosives and licensing the formula to governments to make weapons. One day, Nobel's brother died. By accident, a newspaper printed an obituary notice for Alfred instead of the deceased brother. 
It identified him as the inventor of dynamite who made a fortune by enabling armies to achieve new levels of mass destruction. Nobel had the unique opportunity to read his own obituary in his lifetime and get a glimpse of how he would be remembered as a merchant of death and destruction. The newspaper's mistake forced him to turn around, to turn away from the mirror and look out the window to see what impact his life was really having. That's when he decided to change directions. He took his fortune and used it to establish the awards for accomplishments contributing to life rather than death. My friends, that's a highly visible case of what it means to repent, to turn around. We all need to be reminded of the importance of repenting of our sins. As Catholics, we are blessed with a very clear and concrete way to repent as often as we need to. It is called going to confession. In the sacrament of confession, when we live it from the heart, we climb back into the arms of our Heavenly Father, hiding nothing, freely admitting our need for Him. In confession, Jesus purifies our hearts, heals our wounds, and enlightens our minds. Confession gives us the assurance of God's forgiveness and the grace that we need. Confession is God's gift to us just as much as the Eucharist and baptism and the church itself. He wants us to make use of it. He wants it to be easy for us to come back to him, to repent, to live all the time in communion with him. He wants us to hear the words of forgiveness. When I'm about to pray the prayer of absolution, I always ask people to listen to what I am about to say. Not only in our imagination, but with our ears. On Wednesdays during Lent here, we celebrate Mass at 6 p.m. in the chapel, followed by adoration and confessions until 8. I will be the celebrant this coming week, and I'm going to offer you the shopper's special. And our Father, a Hail Mary, and a Glory Be, for 15 sins and under. <laughs> we often ask God to make us hop happy, and that's good. Today, he is asking us to let him make us happy by repenting, by turning away from our sin and selfishness, and turning back into his arms. My friends, let's not disappoint him. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. 
Amen. Calling upon our loving Father, let us lift our needs in those of the world. For the church, may God's love and mercy be abundant upon her. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people throughout the world, especially those in Ukraine, may they be blessed with leaders who work diligently for peace and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those, who hearts are, for those whose hearts are burdened by sin and who struggle to trust in God's mercy and forgiveness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, may we follow the example of St. Joseph in allowing the Lord to guide our lives and the example of St. Patrick, whose feast day we celebrated this week. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially David Dedekian, Paul Robera, and Matthew Rourke, may they find peace and eternal rest in the presence of God in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Fanny Shea, who is especially remembered at this Mass, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers and concerns we silently call to mind. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, receive the prayers that we lift up to you today. We ask these in the name of your Son, Jesus, who lives, who reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please join in singing our offertory hymn number 396, Drawn to You. Pray, beloved, that this our sacrifice may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all of God's holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant Fanny, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At 
the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. During communion, please join in singing Jesus Meek and Humble, number 517.
here. For our Lenten act of prayer this week, reflect on the fruit you bear in your own lives by praying the branches prayer found in the bulletin. For next week, please bring in shower flip-flops or soap to benefit the local YMCA and Emmaus House. Baskets will be in the back of the church. Please check out the new and improved sacredheartsparish.com. It has all you loved about the old site, including live stream, the bulletin, online giving, plus some great new features. The Catholic Appeal is underway, and it is vitally important for our parish to finance, th let me start that again. The Catholic Appeal is underway, and it is a vitally important way for our parish to finance the ministry we do. Please consider participating, envelopes, are on the end of the pews. Thank you for those who were able to give to the humanitarian relief for the people of Ukraine in today's second collection. We continue to pray for them and for the lives of all whose human dignity as children of God is threatened. Faith Formation and Sacred Heart School families are invited to join us Sunday, March 27th, for a Lent family gathering. We'll begin with Mass at 9 a.m., followed by light refreshments, a family activity, and time for prayer and Lenten reflection. 
We begin at Sacred Hearts Church and finish at Sacred Hearts School Auditorium. RSVP by Wednesday, March 23rd. More details can be found in our weekly bulletin. Good afternoon, everyone. As you heard, of course, Bill just say our hearts are still troubled by the terrible situation unfolding in Ukraine. Our prayers continue for our brothers and sisters in our human family. And for that reason, Pope Francis has asked all bishops to join him this Friday for the consecration of Russia and Ukraine to the Blessed Virgin Mary. This is a big thing for the world. It's on the feast day of the Solemnity of the Annunciation. So our local bishop, Bishop Hennessy, will be joining all the priests of our region in Lowell on Friday at 11 o'clock, six hours uh, to, the, to the moment that the Pope will be doing that in Rome at 5 p.m. to consecrate these areas of the world to Our Lady for hope and healing. So please join us in Lowell if you can, 11 o'clock Friday at the Mecca Conception Church right downtown Lowell. If you cannot join us then, please come to our lower chapel. We'll extend our adoration time till 12 noon. So at 11 o'clock, we'll have some parishioners lead the rosary and pray the consecration prayer. I'll be in Lowell with the bishop. And it's very serious, as we all know, and this is our Catholic way of really supporting our friends there and consecrating them goodwill, peace, hope to Our Lady. So if you cannot be the place, wherever you are at work or on the road, just think 11 o'clock, pray that Our Lady will help us overcome this evil in the world and bring about peace and hope for these people who are desperate, who are refugees, who are struggling, who are hurting. So wherever you are Friday, here, Lowell, at home, working, wherever you are, 11 o'clock, at least say one Hail Mary and ask Our Lady to intercede for this terrible situation to bring about peace and new life. And that's our gift, prayer, to those people, okay? And thank you again for helping us today in our Senate collection to bring forth support to all those who are suffering. We as a parish, archdiocese, country, world, can help in so many ways. So thank you very much. And have a wonderful week in love and prayer. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth, glorifying God by your lives. You, Have a blessed and wonderful week. You too, Father. Thank you. Please join in our singing our closing hymn, number 126, Save Your People.